guys so today we're going to continue on with excretion i'm going to leave these up here in terms of answers to your questions so hopefully there was nothing untoward with your answers so pause this if you need to so note here two methods of insulation the fat layer, the adipose layer, and the fact that you can trap air, or even the fact that you have hair. So the explanation for when temperature high is the vasodilation, the fact that you sweat, and the fact that the hair lie flat. And when the temperature drops, the bits that we can add in that we did were vasoconstriction, the hair stand up, Pilo erection and the air trapped. We had down here the tyroxine comment. So you should have enough on those for those things. Okay, so today we're going to look at the urinary system. It is roughly page 184 in our my version of your notes book. And we you need to know the parts of your urinary system. And there are two things that look very, very similar in terms of how, what they look like. They are pronounced differently, so ureter and urethra. And the SEC is really fussy about the spelling of these two things. But one of those, I'm gonna give you the silly hint to remember which tube we actually leave your body from. So by now, you should be able to vomit up a definition for homeostasis and excretion really, really easy. So homeostasis, the ability to maintain a constant internal environment, and excretion is the removal of metabolic waste products made in the body. Now, just to remind ourselves again, excretion and homeostasis, what are all the different ways that the excretory system helps us? It regulates our body temperature. It is involved in osmoregulation. So this would be enough for the SEC. And the explanation after it is what's in brackets. So it maintains the salt and the water concentration in your body fluid. So osmo is like osmosis, and essentially our excretory system makes sure that our salt water balance is good in our tissue fluid and in our blood. And finally, it will remove the waste products of metabolism for us. Now, in terms of Tim and Moby, Tim and Moby. Hey, I think your site is really cool. Well, just wondering if you guys have some cool facts on water and how it helps your body. Signed, Kristen. Well, water is probably the most important substance to life as we know it. Without liquid water, there might not even be any life here on this planet of ours. Let's focus in a bit and concentrate on one aspect of how water helps your body. Peeing. The cells in your body are busy little guys. In going about their work, cells produce waste that can be poisonous to your body. The urinary system is your body's way of removing this waste. When you pee, water and chemical waste leave your body. It's yellowish in color and we call it urine. That's right, Moby, these kidney beans are named after organs in your body. We each have two kidneys that filter waste out of our blood. When your blood flows through the kidneys, useful substances like sugars are extracted and returned to the body. Kidneys contain millions of tiny filters called nephrons. The nephrons filter out waste. This waste is carried to your bladder through a tube called the ureter. The bladder is a stretchy sac that expands to hold the liquid your kidneys send it. When the sac is about half full, you feel the urge to go to the bathroom. The urine exits your body through a tube called the urethra. So the next time you feel the urge to pee, go and do it. Because when you gotta go, you gotta go. Um, excuse me, I think I drank too much water because I have to go again. Aha, very, very funny now. Now let me go. Don't squeeze! Alrighty, so that just gave you a brief introduction. So when we look at the organs of excretion, your urinary system or your kidneys are part of that, but our main organs are our lungs and our skin and our kidneys, and you have this little diagram in your book. So lungs, what is it that they remove? We've done our respiratory system, so hopefully you are telling me now that they remove, excuse me, um, 
So we have lungs, skin and kidneys and our lungs remove water and carbon dioxide. Our skin removes water and salt. And our kidneys ooh, will remove urea, salts and water. So you need to know each product of excretion. Um, now, in reality, the new junior cycle doesn't have. So the old junior cert, you had to know bits and pieces. So we're going to go beyond that now. So we'll ignore this. This is um, what are called scanning electron. Or no, it's not scanning electron microscopy. It's a form of scanning like an MRI where it's giving you a three-dimensional image. And here you can see the kidneys here in the red. And this big white thing here is your aorta, the biggest blood vessel coming from your heart. And you can see here that the aorta branches off to bring blood into your kidneys. And these little white things down here are nerves. <coughs> so this is it now with the bits and pieces removed again. So you can see that there's a little joins into your kidneys here. So we're only really looking at the kidneys and the blood vessels. And you can see how big your aorta is up here and how it's getting smaller as it goes down um, your body and away from your heart. So in terms of our urinary system, we are going to do a diagram drawing of it and we are going to start with our kidneys. So we have two kidneys, like so. I'm gonna color code um, the blood vessels in a minute. And out of each kidney, you are going to have a tube that is going to link to your bladder, like so. And coming out of your bladder, you have one other tube. Um, I'm just going to put in here, you have little sphincter muscles, and they will control whether your bladder will open or close. So I'm going to draw in red coming down and out the red gets a little bit smaller here like so and obviously it's going to go to both sides we're also going to draw in blue just down here so we also have blue that is going to connect to your kidneys as well. I'm just going to color these in for ease of seeing in terms of the blue. So in terms of a diagram, your the diagram is, is relatively simple. We are going to give each little kidney a kind of a crown. So these are your adrenal glands that produce adrenaline. If you want to color them in, you can. It's not the end of the world if you don't. But on top of each kidney, there are adrenal glands. So when you come back to school, my kidneys have been ordered and they'll be waiting for you. Excuse me. And just slightly above your kidneys, we will get our diaphragm from our respiratory system. So this is our diaphragm. These are our adrenal glands. We then have our kidney. We have the ureter, we have our bladder, we have these little things down here are the sphincter muscles, so these are the things that will control whether or not your bladder opens and closes. So when you were small and learning to be toilet trained, this was what you're actually training your sphincter muscles to do their job. And down here we have your urethra. Now, in my head, how I distinguish between ureter and urethra is if you've ever, ever, ever been on a long journey in a car and you are dying for a wee, as soon as you get into the toilet, everybody without fail will go, ah, there's a little relief. And that helps me remember that it is your urethra is where the urine exits your body. In terms of our blood um, vessels, we haven't done our blood vessels yet. Wrong color. So here, this is going to be your aorta. And when your aorta gets smaller here, it becomes what's called your renal, which is just a posh word for kidney. 
an artery, which is the blood vessels that leave the heart. On this other side here, this is your vena cava. So this is the blood vessel that brings blood back to your heart. And the vena cava, the smaller version of it, is called your renal vein. So again, the word renal just means kidney and veins go back toward the heart and arteries go away. So in terms of our diagram, it's very, very simple. And in terms of the things that you need to um, just be aware of, So in terms of our urinary system, it is composed of two kidneys. It has two ureters. It has a bladder and it has a urethra. Plus it's blood supply. And you need to know the name of all four blood vessels so vena cava aorta a renal vein and a renal artery and that is probably new information to a point from junior cycle other than that um that pretty much brings us to the end of the lesson i'm just going to confirm that that is the case but i'm pretty certain that we've put in all of our things that we needed to put in and that is us done for today. So there's uh, some questions on page 185 and I am on Zoom if you require me.